Hello everyone and welcome to Fletcher Farms Amarillo. I'm Julie Fletcher. A few weeks ago I announced that we were going to be rescuing another mare, lot 9937 from Bowie, Texas Livestock. And if you didn't see that video, this was a clip from the livestock yard and the reason that we rescued her. We have lot number 9937. This is going to be a sorrel Belgian mare. She stands at 18 hands and is 18 years of age. She does have some sores on her. I'll show you here. You can see some rub spots top of the head, down the cheek. Uh, she has just little old ones here on her sides. And it's like she kind of got down and was in a bit of a jam, but. So as you can see from that video, she needed medical attention. Um, I called the livestock yard to ask them what that black spot on the, her backside was, and they told me that it was a rub spot uh, from being in the trailer. This was our first look at lot number 9937, who we decided to name Amara, and she was in much worse shape than we thought. Watching her walk to the trailer, you could tell that she was sore in her back end and that that rub spot that they said was from the trailer was definitely not. It definitely looked like an abrasion or some kind of cut or something along those lines. At this point, we weren't quite sure what that was, but we knew it wasn't a rub spot because you could see underneath it. When we stopped for fuel, I was able to get some closer up pictures and videos of her abrasions and scars and uh, some of the things that she had going on. These are just some pictures of the cuts and abrasions that she had, which they did show in the original livestock video, but some were, were new. I did take this video of all the cuts and everything that she had going on on her uh, so I could send it to Dr. Wagner because we were en route to go see her next. She had some new cuts on her foot and then the abrasions on her face were much worse than what were, was shown in the original video. Despite being in the condition that she was in, she was definitely excited about hay. This was when we stopped for fuel the second time and she was enjoying hay and we just wanted to make sure that she was doing okay back there and she definitely was. So after we got her picked up, we went straight to MVP and met Dr. Wagner so she could take a look at her and see what she had going on. Uh, obviously to do some blood work, that's always the first thing that we do when we rescue these horses is to get blood work done to make sure that they don't have an infection that they're going to pass on to any of our other horses here that we have on the farm. So she did blood work and uh, this was a little bit of uh, what happened when we went to the vet with her. I run an SAA so we can know if she has like a systemic infection anywhere or okay. Okay. She's got decent teeth. I think. Oh, my I'm sorry. That is my thing, but I think she is too terrible. I think that one is on her backside. It's the same. It's just a, a scab. An abrasion that the wound, the yeah. outer skin died off. Yeah. It looked a lot it worse. Like there was a hole in the other side on the on the right hand side. I can't tell though. Cause I just caught a glimpse in the trailer. Yeah, and it's like black, like asphalt. That's why I was saying like road rash, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that's for sure. Dr. Wagner got all her cuts cleaned up with soap and water, and then she also cleaned them with some antiseptic. She did cut some of the bigger scabs off just so that skin wasn't hanging there, and that's what she's doing here in this video. But got everything cleaned up and got her some antibiotics because her white cell count was elevated, so she did have some sort of infection that we needed to treat. So this one's still pretty attached, so I'm not, I'm not taking most of it off, just a little bit. But it will come. So all that's gonna fall off? I th it's like dead all the way. You can see where it wants to work up around this edge. So I don't know where exactly it'll stop down here, but. Okay. 
But that's just her backside, like not something else going on. Right. It's just her skin, really. Poor girl. Since the abrasions on her foot look to be newer, Dr. Wagner cleaned those up really well. And then since it was raining, she did go ahead and wrap them. So that's what she's doing here in this video. So in conclusion of this vet visit, Dr. Wagner thinks that Amara had some type of fall and that's what all these abrasions are from, uh, possibly on asphalt and that's why it's black. But other than that, we got a clean bill of health, some antibiotics and some paste for our wounds. So after the vet's office, we got her back here to the farm. But since her white count was elevated and she did have an infection going on of some kind, Dr. Wagner suggested that we keep her separated from the other horses, uh, from her drinking water from the same waterers. So we made a space for her inside the barn where she could uh, be with the other horses, um, but not uh, drinking from the same water. So we had her set up in the barn and this was a little bit from uh, what was going on with her when we got her back here to the farm. There we go, good girl. We got her set up with a big bucket of water. I didn't catch a video of it, but from the start, we noticed that she was having a hard time lowering her head. So we didn't know if it was from the accident that she had falling on the asphalt or what the situation was with that. But we got her an elevated feeder and got her water bowl elevated as well. So we got her all taken care of and she was tucked in for the night. The next day, Corey and I did some rearranging in the barn. We took the mangers that we usually feed the horses out of and flipped it over so it would be elevated for her so she could eat and make it easier for her so she wouldn't have to lower her head. The left side of her neck is swollen and Dr. Wagner believed that that was from the fall that she had on the asphalt. Uh, so from this video, you can tell we did some much needed grooming and got all the mud and dirt off of us. This was the following day I groomed her again. Uh, she still had some loose hair and I wanted to go back and get that out. As you can tell, she's actually enjoying her brushes now and uh, she made some really cute faces. So uh, I enjoyed this and I thought you would as well. After we finished getting brushed, the next thing that I did is cleaned all her wounds and abrasions with soap and water. And then after that, there's some cream that I need to put on all of them. As Dr. Wagner explained, that scab on her backside did fall off. I did spare you the details because there is a hole underneath and it is quite large. And these are a few other pictures that I had taken of her and she was just such a beautiful girl and I wanted to share them with you. So as you can see, everything was going really well with her and she was on the road to recovery. We were getting her wounds doctored every single day. She was enjoying brushes and eating really well and going to the bathroom and everything. And yesterday I went out to the barn to go feed everybody breakfast and she was laying down. I went into the stall, she would not stand up. So of course I called Dr. Wagner and she was in surgery. And I also called our other vet, Dr. Amber, and she was in surgery as well. So uh, yesterday was not a good day if you had an emergency on a farm because everybody was tied up yesterday. I did end up talking to you, Dr. Wagner, and she told us to keep her as calm as we possibly could uh, since she wasn't standing up on her own. Um, my thought on the reason that she uh, wasn't standing up was because um, the bottom leg that she was laying on, she wouldn't bend it. And so she couldn't get it underneath her to stand up. So my theory was was if we could get her rolled over to her other side, maybe she would stand up on her own. So um, I contact, I called Corey. He was at work. I uh, called Kara. Kara came over. Corey came home from work, and Dr. Wagner got here probably about 12 o'clock. So when she wouldn't stand up, we got some blankets to put underneath her head because every time she tried to get up, she would flail and smack her head back down on the ground. Uh, this was the most difficult thing to watch. And since Dr. Wagner said that we needed to keep her as calm as possible, she was only calm when I was in there. If Corey or Kara came in, uh, she would start getting uncomfortable. And 
so I just sat with her and laid with her and um, cried on her because I didn't know what was going on and didn't know what was going to happen. So it was very, very upsetting to see her like this. And um, I don't like to see any animal suffer. And this was kind of what she kept doing. And every time she tried to get up, she would smack her head down. So I was trying to hold her head so she would stop smacking it on the ground. So it was a very difficult morning and very difficult to watch. So when Dr. Wagner got here, uh, she uh, did an evaluation on her and this was a little bit of the uh, video from when Dr. Wagner was here. Well, hang on, but she also has spinal injury because she, we have to, we had these rolled over, we rolled them back over, we had everything elevated to almost about four and a half feet off the ground. Yeah. That's why I didn't want to roll her because I don't know, I know her neck is incredibly stiff and she can't bend down, so I didn't want to put her in that position because Dr. Amber said that their head gets contorted when you roll them. When Dr. Wagner arrived, she gave her some medication to, uh, for pain and also a muscle relaxer because when they lay on their side for a long amount of time, uh, they can get stiff in that side that they're laying on. Since we knew she had an issue with her neck, we didn't know if she had hurt herself when she fell and she was having a problem with that leg altogether. So Dr. Wagner wanted to test that theory to make sure that she didn't have a spinal injury. So right here, she's poking her in the foot just to see that she still has feeling in that back leg. Sometimes what will happen too is like once they get down and they can't get back up, their muscles get tight on that side because there's some heavy laying on them. So I think that might be why now she's like, how you guys were saying, you don't know if it's a good thing for her neck. Yeah. I think she can't, she's having a hard time rolling up on her sternum because like all the muscles, even they're tight, they're tight. Like that's the back leg that is going to be the origin of the problem because that was always the one who's laying on. Yes. And, um, it could have gotten injured, you know, when she got all the road rash and stuff, too. Well, that, I don't know if that's now part of this. Like, she fell at some point and was down for some time because now her face is exactly scratched up and seen as that Yeah, definitely. So, it could have been, yeah, some, some bad injury that we don't need to. And, like, I think it's a spy because she never had, like, really swelling so do you think it's okay? I think her neurologic function is okay, like the back because she doesn't feel it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think flipping it over is not a deal, but I think it's probably the only thing she has. Um, we did get her rolled over and she did stand up on her own so my theory was correct <laughs> however once we got her standing back up uh, she did urinate and it was very uh, dark yellow so she hadn't drank anything for about 10 hours um, and she didn't really eat any of her hay from the night before since she had gone down at 2 a.m. Um, from what I could tell from our security cameras. Um, once we got her standing up uh, she drank a little bit of water and started eating a little bit of alpha pro this was right after we got her up. It was pretty warm in the barn and she was a little sweaty, so she went over by the door to stand there. We were really happy that she was up and walking around and moving again. Uh, it was completely devastating and it broke my heart to see her in that condition. Dr. Wagner left and Corey went back to work. And Kara and I were just still staying, hanging around the barn and just watching her to make sure that she wasn't going to try to lay down again. And uh, she was still pretty groggy. So I put a halter on her and we were going to take her for a walk and uh, took her out for a little walk in the pasture. 
I thought it was a good idea to get her up and walking around to help with some of the stiffness from being down for so long. We did take a walk around the pasture for quite some time, probably about 20 minutes or so. Um, didn't include this all in the video, but this was just uh, some of the walk when we took her out into the paddock area. And then we brought her back into the barn and then she started acting like she wanted to go back to lay back down again. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. As soon as she started to do that, where she wanted to lay back down, I called Dr. Wagner and Dr. Wagner said to get her loaded up and bring her down to the clinic. It sounded like she might be having a colic issue going on. Um, since she hadn't drank anything, she might be dehydrated as well. So we wanted to get her down to the clinic to make sure, uh, to find out what was going on because she was still obviously having an issue because she wanted to try to lay down again. So uh, I kept her, Kara kept her walking. Uh, I got the trailer hooked up and we got her back down to MVP. And this is what happened when we were down at MVP. Kara kept her walking while I was getting the trailer hooked up and every time she circled back towards the barn, uh, she kept pulling to want to go back into the barn. So we kept her moving until we got the trailer hooked up so we could get her down to the vet's office. When we got there, Dr. Wagner pulled some blood to see what was going on in her blood labs. Uh, we walked her in the parking lot just to keep her moving so she wouldn't try to lay down again until we could get her into the exam room. So this was us walking her back and forth at the vet's office. Dr. Wagner thought since the reason that she went down in the first place was that she might be colicking. So she's doing an ultrasound here to check her stomach to see what's going on inside her. And then she also checked her lungs and everything else while she was doing this ultrasound. The other thing I'm looking for, her blood work isn't done yet, but the part that is done shows that she still has an elevated white cell count, even after 10 days of antibiotics. So I don't know what to make of that. It's like she has, uh, they can get like internal abscesses and stuff that are in, inside. Or maybe it's a or something? No, like from a bacteria that she was exposed to previously. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Upper respiratory bacteria and horses can't eat. It goes to the lymph nodes, and for occasionally we'll get it to where it doesn't just stay in the lymph nodes, like in the upper respiratory tract. It actually goes to the lymph nodes in the rest of the body. So I don't know. That's kind of I'm like looking for any hit of something like that because she has that markedly elevated white cell count despite our treatment. So, the one thing, um, her lungs do have some evidence of disease, not in access, but if you just want to look at that, it's pretty So, these little streaks that come down, this is the lung surface, and then ultrasound can't see through air, so you should just have a bright, white surface and then everything else under this is the ultrasound it's like it it does it's not actually there mm -hmm. the ultrasound just creates that but these little streaking down are areas where the surface of the lung is rough and not that smooth white and so she has those spots there but they're going um kind of all over so she could have you know a pneumonia like that maybe can be from the car. Dr. Wagner didn't see anything significant in the ultrasound, so she was going to get her some electrolytes because we were still treating this as a mild colic case. So right here, she's putting a tube down her uh, esophagus into her stomach to give her the electrolytes that are in that bucket. So these go directly into her stomach, so the horse is definitely going to be hydrated after this. Okay. 
Um, I don't know. And then so you have to do this side, so you don't want to get any extra gas in the to do it all. I really don't think she has any. It doesn't fit with the rest of her chemical signs, but I just want to go to the chest. Oh, boy. Yeah. This is for sure why she's sick, but we definitely know she laid down. Now I'm looking at it because she wasn't feeling well instead of the leg very much. And the, the way the leg would work when we got to her is just because she had been down on that side for long enough that her muscles weren't Um. So it's, so yeah, so I don't know exactly why she wasn't feeling well when we were down. It could be a mild fall, it could be, you know, anything. It could have to do with this chronic infection that I feel like she has. Um, so with, with her not being able to bend down too, I don't think she got a lot of water in her body. So yeah. I would say she was probably behind the power curve with dehydration from the moment we got her. Because yeah. she didn't drink any from the month, between month after we filled water, she couldn't even get to that, which would sit where the auto waters would sit. And I think there is something weird about her neck. Yeah, look at that. Like, look at how, look at how pronounced, like, it just looks how pronounced like this, this side is versus the other side. And I was pressing on it there. I was placed and I was just trying to like figure out. It did not seem to be active. Like as far as, it doesn't seem like it hurts her. Right. But it just looks super small on that side. Right. It was good. I was good. But if, if she got hit right there, if that's where she went down on this side, then that would be, there would be some soft tissue trauma over there too in the neck, would not there? Just like blunt trauma? Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely worth taking some x-rays of that too, but maybe like after we get to where we think she's going a little bit better. Um, Usually I keep these yeah. cases. Yeah, the police keep her yeah. down. You, if she goes down again, if, it, if she goes down, I'd rather deal with it here than, than yeah. there. And what we're going to do is, we're going to run some fluid in her, in here, and then we're going to put her in a bigger space somewhere outside. Because I'm trying to put her inside, then she'll definitely get it. It's too yeah. small. So. So the plan moving forward was to get an IV started so we could get fluids directly into her. So Dr. Wagner was putting the catheter in right here. And she was going to stay for a couple nights uh, just so she could be monitored because if she did try to go back down, they were more equipped at the hospital to take care of that versus having her come back home. So this was her after they got her hooked up to the IV and was starting to get her fluids. So she's in good hands and we were really grateful for all the help at MVP. So she did stay at MVP last night. Uh, I was there this morning. She was doing a little bit better. She didn't try to lay down during the middle of the night or anything. Uh, she was up eating and drinking, so that was a good thing. This was Amara the next day when I went to go visit her at the hospital. They always look so much bigger than the other horses, and that's not a small horse next to her by any means. They're just that tall and that big. But she was looking much better, and she did good during the night. Uh, Dr. Wagner said from what she could see, she did not try to lay down in the middle of the night. So that was a good thing and a good sign. So she did also eat some food, and her little lip just cracks me up. So I thought I'd share that with you as well. And then she also did drink some water. So that's a good thing in that she was getting hydration and was well taken care of. Uh, she's going to stay at MVP for a couple days, and we'll try to keep you posted as much as possible as to what's going on with her. Uh, this was a very scary situation because anybody that has horses knows that a down horse is a dead horse. And if a horse can't stand up on their own, there's not much 
there's not much that you can do about it and it's it's a bad situation so I'm glad that she was up and that she's getting excellent care down at MVP I have to thank our vets again as usual Dr. Wagner and Dr. Amber are absolutely amazing uh, Dr. Amber did try to talk us through uh, getting her rolled over however we were not <laughs> we were not ready to do that on our own so we wanted to make sure that we were going to roll her when one of the vets were here we're going to be doing some more tests down at MVP she was going to do some uh, um, laser therapy on her neck because her neck is stiff so we don't know if that was from the original fall that she had taken or or what the situation is with her neck so she was going to do some x-rays so I'll have the results for you soon with that and then also she was going to do some x-rays on her leg to find out what was going on if that was something in her stifle joint or lower down in her leg we'll definitely keep you posted on everything that's happening with her um, Amara is the sweetest horse ever and uh, we're so glad that we were able to rescue her and that she's on the road to recovery so she's in good hands down at MVP and we really can't thank Dr. Wagner and Dr. Amber and everyone at, the, our, at our vet clinics because they're just absolutely amazing and they take such wonderful care of our horses and we really can't thank them enough um, but again thank you all so much for watching we will keep you updated as much as possible on what's going on with Amara and also I'll be working on some more update videos on the rest of the horses here but everyone else is doing well so again thank you so much for watching we truly appreciate your support and if anyone has any questions I didn't cover something in this video put them in the comments below and I will try to answer them so thank you again for watching we truly appreciate your support and we'll see you soon thanks